Hey everybody, so today I want to talk to you about cameras. Specifically, we're going to be talking about still cameras and still photography. I'm not going to be discussing video today. And what I want to talk to you is about this common misconception about megapixels. How many megapixels does your camera have? Well, I got to have a camera that has 10 megapixels. I got to have a camera that has 24. Oh, well this camera is the newest camera and it has 50 megapixels. Okay, let's take a step back. First of all, megapixels, let's define what it is. Megapixels is nothing more than that one little square microscopic space on your sensor. Okay, the more it's true, the more megapixels you have, the sharper your image, and also the more light it'll capture depending on your sensor. So it can be better in low light situations. But when it comes to your family photos and your family vacations, you really need a camera that is 24, 50 megapixels. Is it really necessary? No, and I'll show you why. Lately, I have been going through and printing out all my family photos. I'm gonna go through real quick and open up to Virginia. Um, because I know exactly which camera these were taken on. And I want you to take a look at this photo right here. This is printed on a 5x7. I actually printed off this myself at home with my inkjet printer. Okay, and I'm hoping that the camera is actually capturing this good enough. I want you to take a look at another picture. This one again right here. And see if I can get my phone to focus here. This one right here. I also printed off at home. Five by seven. I went ahead and took this off here. I'm actually hand holding this uh, right now. So hopefully it actually um, stays nice and stable for you. But that picture I just showed you was that one right there. And I got this one right here. And the reason why I'm hand holding my phone right now is because it wasn't focusing properly with me holding these pictures. And so we got that one right there. Now this one right here is not the greatest of pictures. And the reason being is yes, it really did look like that. It was late fall. And the leaves were starting to fall off the trees. It was past peak time. So the color really did look like that. But you see that picture there. And I'll show you one more from Virginia. Uh, this happened to be a guy dressed up in a colonial costume. So the point I wanted to make about showing you those pictures is they actually looked pretty good, didn't they? Printed out 5 by 7 They were printed out with an inkjet printer in my house um, so it was not a professional lab printer at all and they still came out pretty good do you know what camera i took those with i'll give you a hint those pictures were taken back in 1998 possibly 1999 with one of the first digital cameras i ever had that camera right here it is a polaroid digital camera I took four AA batteries and truthfully you could only get maybe 10, 15 pictures before you would have to replace the batteries. That's how quickly it ate up four AA batteries. Considering the fact it was my first digital camera in the late 90s, how many megapixels? Less than one. It was actually advertised as a one megapixel digital camera. So truthfully when it comes to your family photos, and your memories yes more megapixels can help with lower light situations and sharpness but do you really need 10 14 24 50 and i even heard this camera coming out with 60 megapixels although it hasn't been released yet but one camera company is actually working on it no not for your personal photos not for your family vacations so people, stop worrying about megapixels. Enjoy the camera. Pick up what's in your budget. 
Now, if you're shooting professionally, weddings, doing cinema photography, and like I said, I'm not going to go into the video aspects of it, but for still pictures, even 5x7, 1 megapixels come out pretty nice. And yes, the more megapixels, the sharper the image, the better low light capabilities, and the bigger you can blow it up. But if you're just taking pictures that are going to stay on your computer, or like me, after a while, when I'm done with having them on my computer and deciding, you know, posting them on social media, or when I'm actually done creating products on them and I'm just keeping them for memories and trips that I've taken. In all reality, it doesn't matter. One megapixel was good enough. You know, I when I'm shopping for cameras, I'm not megapixel crazy at all. I look for different features, you know, whether the ergonomics of it, you know, the type of lenses that I can get with it, the battery issue, does it overheat, you know, stuff like that. I you know how portable it is uh, for my needs. Can I conceal the camera if I'm in a area that is a little bit shady and a little bit sketchy but i still want to take some photos here's the other thing when you have jpeg sitting on your computer they will actually degrade over the number of uh, years and it all has to do with the way storage on your hard drive is they start degrading colors start going after a while you know you should really save your pictures in a tiff those were JPEGs. That camera did not even shoot RAW or TIFF pictures. Those are all JPEGs that have been sitting on my computer for about almost 20 years now. And I just decided to go ahead and print them off the other day on a 5x7 and they still looked good. So people, stop worrying about megapixels. It's just not worth it. Go pick up a camera that's within your budget. Enjoy it. Learn to shoot with it. Print your pictures because hard drives do crash. But don't get caught up in, you know, 24, 50, 60 megapixels, 10 megapixels. That was a 1 megapixel camera. And yes, they don't make 1 megapixel cameras anymore. And here, here's another thing about megapixels. Some cameras are actually better than others. I have seen... People shoot with a 10 megapixel camera, get better pictures than a 20 megapixel camera. And I'm not talking about because of the fact that they did not know how to use their camera and the style of photography. What I'm talking about is putting the camera in the same person's hands. I know some of you shot with a 5 megapixel camera, shot with a 10 megapixel camera, and had a point and shoot that was a 3 megapixel camera. And they got different results. And sometimes the 10 megapixel camera was not all that great. I mean, there were chromatic aberrations having to do with the lenses. There were, you know, issues with the sensor and everything. And the 3 megapixel camera actually outperformed the 10 megapixel camera made by the same company. And these were Canon cameras because the guy was a Canon shooter. He refused to shoot anything else. Myself, over the years, I have shot with the 1 megapixel camera, I have shot in film, I've shot with the 10 megapixel camera, I've shot with the 14 megapixel camera, and to be honest with you, it is really has to do with the photographer, the lighting situations, and what your end goal is for the pictures. If I was just pr taking pictures for myself and sticking them in an album, a 1 megapixel, 5 megapixel camera, that had a good lens on it would be perfectly fine. Now that was a one megapixel point and shoot. That was all that was out at the time. That was affordable. That worked out fine. The pictures, you know, still look great. I still got my memories. So people, stop fretting over megapixels. Concentrate on your photography. Concentrate on taking better pictures. Learn lighting situations. Learn your cameras. And don't worry about megapixels at all it's not worth it so that's my tip for today and we'll see you next time around